I'd like to introduce Jason Smart, Program Officer with Rasmussen Foundation, who heads our arts initiative for our organization. We've all had those moments as kids where, uh, for me, it was taking pink Kleenex tissues and making peonies out of them, or it might be hearing a song on the radio that grabs you and stays in your head for days and days and days, or maybe weeks and weeks, and you wake up in the morning and you're still thinking about it. I grew up in New York, and some of the things I remember is being in the subway and seeing artists performing music with their guitar case open and feeling a compelling reason to go and grab a quarter or a dollar and throw it in there or looking at a book on the shelf that was the great works of the Museum of Modern Art and then many years later getting to walk in and actually see those and feeling a chill that this was something that I had recognized or thought about for so many years and here it was. And I once wrote a poem and it got published in the school bank news probably when I was seven and I thought well maybe I should be a poet. But most of us go on to be nurses or accountants or attorneys or foundation presidents, but not all of you. You've made a decision to do art. Actually, you probably haven't even made a decision. It's not that you want to do it, you have to do it. And we appreciate what you do to make our state such a wonderful state that is so rich in arts of all kinds. And that's what we're here to do today is to celebrate you. So welcome to the 2013 Rasmussen Foundation Individual Arts Awards. <laughs> Rasmussen Foundation launched this program 10 years ago to honor the merit and significance of lives dedicated to serious artistic exploration. The awards are part of a multi-year initiative to support the culture of Alaska, the vibrancy of our communities, and art itself. As of today, the program will have awarded 303 grants, totaling $2.3 million directly to Alaskan artists. This year, 366 applications were received and reviewed by a national panel of esteemed artists and arts leaders from around the country. These panelists were incredibly impressed with the quality of work, the diversity of work, and the distinct voice of Alaskan artists. Now we get to the business at hand. I'd like to begin by announcing our 25 project grant recipients each of whom will receive an award of $7,500. First, Anna Lynch. Anna, come on up. <laughs> Thank you very much. We want you to see who they are in case you missed it. And next, will tell you that Anna is a singer-songwriter from Anchorage. She will use her project award to record her first full-length album of all original music. Congratulations. <laughs> Christine Bile. Christine is a writer from Healy who will launch a national book tour this year following the publication of her first work, Dirt Work, a nonfiction account of life on a wilderness trail crew. This is Christine's second project award. Congratulations, Christine. Deborah Schild. Deborah produces documentaries for a global audience. Her award will assist in the completion of a film that examines change in the environment, culture, and economies for the people in Little Diomede and Wales Islands. Deborah lives in Anchorage. Congratulations. <laughs> Alice Bassler Sullivan. She is an Anchorage-based choreographer, dancer, and teacher, and with her award, she will engage in short-term residencies to learn, create, and inspire her future work. Congratulations, Alice. <laughs> 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 
Nathan Schaefer works in the emerging field of augmented reality installations. He will use his award to build in the digital world, the completely domed city of the future, which had been planned for construction in 1968 and what is now Point McKenzie. Nathan lives in Anchorage. Congratulations. Constance Baltuck is a painter whose work is based on the landscape and flora between the shores of the Gastineau Channel, where she lives in Juneau. Her award will allow for exploration, experimentation, risk-taking, and a solo exhibit at the Juneau Douglas City Museum in the fall of 2014. Congratulations to you. Carl Posh is a clarinetist who is the second generation of his family to play with the Anchorage Symphony. With his award, he will learn and stretch, collaborate with world-class musicians, and participate in the Willa Lobos Chamber Music Symposium in Brazil. Thank you. Sir. Christy Nami. Erickson is a spoken word artist living in Juneau who has performed on stages large and small. She will undertake the production of her first solo CD. Congratulations, Christy. <laughs> Lucian Childs is a writer with a love and understanding of the short story plans to travel to several writers' conferences and retreats and use the inspiration and learning to create five new stories and curate a new publication. Congratulations. <laughs> Nahan is a clinket carver of wood and metals who will use his award to create under the guidance of master carver and 2009 distinguished artist Nathan Jackson, a full-size 35-foot long traditional canoe with a red cedar base. Congratulations. And Nahan lives in Ward Cove, Alaska. <laughs> Christopher Taylor is a painter from Juneau whose work has been focused on the human figure. Beginning in children's book illustration, then veering into art and political commentary, he now plans to push himself deeper into the world of abstraction. Congratulations. Sarah Tabert lives and works in Fairbanks. She started as a printmaker, but is recently finding that the carved block is the art, not the print it was destined to make. She will use her award to collaborate with furniture and cabinet makers in the development of new work. And she would not be here, she says, without uh, the help of many people in the Fairbanks community, and accepting for her is Jocelyn Young. Etsuko Kimura Peterson is a pianist and composer living in Fairbanks who will use her work and her award to produce new nature-inspired pieces and make high-quality recordings of a selection of her work. And this is Etsuko's second project award. Congratulations. <laughs> Linda Infante Lyons is an Anchorage-based visual artist who is ready to explore larger format work now that she's moved into a larger studio. She will use her award to outfit the studio with new supplies and equipment. Congratulations, Linda. Holly Nordlum is a visual artist and printmaker born in Kotzebue and living in Anchorage. She will attend classes at a print workshop this summer and outfit her studio with equipment and supplies to execute larger, multicolored designs. Congratulations, Holly. <laughs> Joan Knuckles Wilson is a writer who has been working for 10 years to complete a nonfiction spiritual memoir. With her award, she will take a sabbatical from her job as an attorney to complete her manuscript. Congratulations, Joan. George Overpeck from Homer is a woodturner who produces beautiful bowls, vessels, and sculptural items from trees found on the Kenai Peninsula. With his award, he will purchase new tools to enable him to make bigger and thinner pieces. Congratulations. 
Do you notice a lot of people are wanting to make bigger stuff? I've noticed there's a trend here. <laughs> Ricky Tagaban works in many forms, including jewelry making, printmaking, and Chilkat weaving. With this award, he will purchase a loom and supplies to focus on weaving a Chilkat style robe. Ricky lives in Juneau. Congratulations. <laughs> Keely Boyle has been writing and performing music since she was 13 years old. She will use her award to make her first solo recording, and she lives in Soldatna. Charles Renfro is a photographer born and raised in Anchorage who travels each year to the Northwest Arctic Borough to teach skiing. And with his award, he will purchase professional photography equipment. Congratulations, Charles. A few of our project awards were not able to be with us today, and I want to mention them. They are Leanne Fali, a painter living in Talkeetna, Kathy Cook, a fiber artist from North Pole, Kendra Nichols Takak, a filmmaker from Nome, and John Whittier, a photographer and filmmaker from Homer, and lastly, Mary Ellefson, a playwright from Juneau. Let's congratulate all of our project award winners. I'm now pleased to announce the 10 Rasmussen Foundation 2013 Fellows. Each will receive an award of $18,000. First, Maria Schell, she's a craft artist from Anchorage known for her intricate and modern patchwork quilts. In the coming years, she's going to experiment with new techniques, not for the bed, but three-dimensional sculptural works for the human body. And this is Maria's second individual artist award. Congratulations. <laughs> Joan Kane is a literary artist based in Anchorage with deep roots to King Island. She has completed two books of poetry while raising her three and five-year-old sons. And Joan will use her fellowship to advance some current projects. This is also her second individual artist award. Congratulations, Joan. <laughs> If there were a Chilcot robe of many colors, it would certainly be worn by Clarissa Rizal. Clarissa works in many media and disciplines, and she applies her artistry to wood, canvas, and fiber. During her fellowship, she will mount her first solo exhibition, complete some weaving projects, and teach others. Congratulations you. to you. Erin Hollowell is a literary artist who in two weeks will release her first poetry collection. She has work published in several literary journals, and during her fellowship, she will support the release of her collection and create new work. Erin lives in Homer. Congratulations. Sharon Kay weaves diminutive grass baskets that are a cultural hallmark of the Aleutian Islands. She learned to weave Attu baskets 30 years ago and has taught and demonstrated in many settings. She will travel to learn more about basket weaving techniques, document traditional methods for gathering and preparing grasses from Atka for weaving, and pass on her knowledge to others. Congratulations. Arlisha Jones is a playwright and poet from Anchorage. Her fellowship were, will provide her the luxury of time, time to complete her latest work titled Hellraiser about the life of labor organizer Mother Jones. Congratulations, Arlisha. Anchorage-based choreographer Becky Kendall is the founder and artistic director of Momentum Dance Collective and a founding partner of the Light Brigade, a collaboration of artists producing urban arts interactions. She will take time away from her day jobs to focus on training, rehearsing, and planning next year's Light Brigade season. Congratulations. Norman Jackson carves in the tradition of the Tongass Clinket. He works in silver and gold and varieties of wood indigenous to Southeast Alaska. With his fellowship, Norman will travel to collaborate with Maori artists for an exhibit planned in New Zealand next year. He lives in Ketchikan, and this is his second individual artist award.
Annie Duffy is a craft artist living in Fairbanks whose current work focuses on vessels made of paper, cotton, bentwood, and beeswax. During her fellowship, Annie will upgrade her studio to allow for larger and site-specific vessels for exhibiting in Seattle, Homer, and Fairbanks. And Annie will also expand her connections outside of Alaska, and in doing so, will travel to Sweden to create new work. And this is Annie's second Individual Artist Award. Congratulations. <laughs> Anna Eardale, a ceramics artist from Homer, is also a winner of one of our fellowships. She could not be here today. Congratulations to all the fellowship winners. Each year, Rasmussen Foundation selects one distinguished artist to receive a $40,000 award. This year's distinguished artist is first and foremost the most delightful and generous person you will ever meet. She's also perhaps one of the most patient, as you will see. Her projects, which can take many, many months to complete, begin in the woods near her Sitka home, where she gathers the raw materials that go into each piece. She says the collecting, the processing, and the creation of the art are direct links to her ancestors and to the spirits of the plants, the trees, and animals that are literally woven into her work. She is also a researcher, a teacher, and a champion of the 10,000 years of science that is embedded in the Clinket art tradition. She has lectured, demonstrated, taught, encouraged, and promoted clinket weaving across the country. She has been named a National Heritage Fellow Living Treasure, a United States Arts Fellow, a National Museum of the American Indian Fellow, and a Rasmussen Foundation Fellow. She has been recognized with a Buffett Indigenous Leadership Award, a Governor's Arts Award, and today she is Rasmussen Foundation's Distinguished Artist of 2013. Let's meet her now. My name is Terry Rothkar, Chase Kuhn Claw in Sangat. I am a raven from the snail house, Duck Dame Tong. I am the daughter of an Englishman and the granddaughter of Kagwantan, the wolf clan. say spinning is one I rarely do without the music. <laughs> so many times I get credited for the creation or you know the beauty of it but I really feel that it's the it's the elements the materials themselves and truly they keep me so humble. If you could smell what this mountain goat smells like when I get it it's so rotten and kind of full of bits of goat and little moist it's even warm because it's uh, just a bit rotten yeah because it takes being a bit rotten to come off of the skin yeah so as much as it's very wow that's so lovely and that's going to be in a museum but it's such a raw kind of connection with the animal itself i think that music reflects that almost <music> So people, when I encounter them, say, well, I'm an artist. Well, what's your medium? Oh, I'm a weaver. Oh, what do you weave? Do you weave? They're thinking textiles or loom weaving. I said, no, I'm a basket weaver. And when they look at my work, the robes are anything but a basket. But when you look at the technique, they're done the same way as the spruce roots. It's two strand and three strand twining. There's no loom involved. So they're actually big baskets out of wool, mountain goat wool in this case, that hold people. Dancing baskets. That's what I always think when I see them. I'm a basket weaver. My boys call me a basket case. 
You know, it isn't as if I get to do just a little part of the artwork. I get to start from the beginning. I use a spinning wheel, but originally it was a drop spindle. This is a frame. You can see it's not attached to anything. This one's just a stick with holes in it. Here, the warps are coming down, and these elements that I'm working with are weft, and they're the ones coming across. By definition, a loom would have tension on the warps to retain the continuity of the fabric. Now, I don't have any of that, so all of the tension happens here. And when I weave with the weft, I am actually taking these weft around to warp and see that twist that happens? There's a twist between every two warps, one behind and a twist, one behind and a twist. That's it. So I'll just work my way across to get my hands in there. Isn't that great? I love the texture. I've got a basket here that's a great example. And if you look at this closely, it's exactly the same. I average about an hour for one row. So this would represent two hours. What are the things that we have in relationship to the people in the past? It's the time. You know, time was probably just as precious, and maybe more so, because they had so much to do. That'll be great. Look at this day. How you can see the deer's heart is just starting to uncurl. And you know, it's spring and it's a little early, but this is the time for spruce roots. So you look for an area where there's just moss starting to mature. There's getting to be a few little berry bushes, but you kind of get underneath and pull the moss back. And underneath there's just some little roots, little spruce roots. Hey guys. Yeah. You can see there's roots under there. Mm -hmm. Boy, you can really get a sense of that chocolate dark brown that's underneath. Yeah. And it's this outer bark. You probably wouldn't have even, look at how loose it is. And you could take this without even probably hurting the tree. And that's the material you use for the dye, for that dark brown that's in the uh, robes. Oh, goodness, jeez. Thank you so much. I get to carry the culture for a little while and then I'll hand it off. I got. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2013 Rasmussen Foundation Distinguished Artist, Terry Rothkar. came over and they were doing a little filming. You know, the studio's ground zero for creativity. I said, let's give them something they don't know. I do most of the time weave in silence, but um, I'm kind of a heavy metal girl myself. <laughs> 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 so it was fun. Okay, a little closer to the mic. Um, I, for all of us, I have to thank Ed and Kathy, you know, you guys' vision, Rasmussen's vision for, for all of us. Um, it's actually our journey. And um, we're an unpredictable lot. <laughs> um, when they invest in us, um, it's not always measurable um, outcomes. Uh, we're, we're kind of, well, we're the soul. 
or you could say we're like the solution to that human um, condition. And I think it's through our inspiration, our integrity, respect, and just a positive presence. I mean, we're all kind of like, I don't know, I told somebody last night, I felt like I'm a, a pro athlete and I just got sponsored. <laughs> it's awesome. So we're all part of that same team. <laughs> yep. Who, who knew math was so beautiful? Or that science could, could dance. <laughs> um, so being Tlingat, this is unusual, but I'm just going to say thank you. Gunas Chish, Kliana, Hawa, thank you all. And don't we just love them? Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Good nashish to you, Terry, for enhancing all of our lives. Thank you for coming today, everyone, and for supporting these artists and their accomplishments. Our next deadline for the Individual Artist Awards Program is next March 2014. We'll begin accepting awards January 1. Before we move into the lobby for some refreshments, I'd like to thank Rasmussen staff member Jason Smart, Program Officer for Arts at the Foundation. I'd also like to thank Charity Summer, our program associate who assisted in the review process, Cassandra Stalzer and Emily Walker who put together today's event, and also Sandra Miller and Jordan Marshall who assisted in the event. And now listen up everyone, for all our Artist Award recipients, the most important person in the room is Marion Hunter, raise your hand. She will collect your signed contracts and that's how you get your check. Thank you very much for coming here. We appreciate all of you.